Hey folks, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. I've started to teach y'all how to read sheet music in my Note Reading for Fiddlers course. And the idea behind it is to make the whole process of learning to read sheet music less intimidating, more fun, more based on games, and kind of intuitive uh, pattern recognition and so forth. And that's what this lesson in particular is going to focus on a process I call intuitive note reading. And the basic idea is, we'll switch to a screen view now so you can see a little fun little diagram. You learn to play something first without sheet music. So say the beginning of Bottom Cabbage Down. That's the first quarter. Then when you get good at that, then you look at the sheet music and then eventually try to play and read at the same time. But you start with things you already know, and then your brain will naturally figure out how the music works. That's the basic idea, and we'll get more into it in the lesson now. So I got the idea of doing this process of intuitive note reading from Rosetta Stone, Duolingo, and language learning, in which you're just shown pictures of things and you hear words, and then you naturally learn and figure it out without a lot of explanation of the rules and the grammar and so forth. Then later you start to get a feel for it and later those things are more explained. But in the beginning there's not a whole bunch of explanation, not a whole bunch of like having to think and figure out. And so to that end, uh, have a little example of how this process will work for learning to read sheet music. This process could apply to any instrument, but it's going to be more focused for fiddlers because it's the note reading for fiddlers course. And that's kind of what I do mainly. But I think that if you're just randomly seeing this on YouTube, you might benefit from the basic idea in whatever instrument you're learning. So we're going to, in these lessons, we're going to be switching from me just talking directly to you to uh, I'm going to be having a screen alongside what I'm saying. So here on the Fiddlehead page for intuitive no reading, this is part, of part a new part of my course on fiddling. And so here we have a series of symbols, they're emojis, and each one is gonna to correspond to a sound. And you will naturally be able to figure out what's going on based on, on hearing it and looking at this series of symbols. So it's a very simple explanation. You already know what those symbols mean, but I think you get the idea that you start to associate a sound with a visual symbol and you don't need me to explain to you, oh, when you see the man with the red hat on and the white beard, that's going to be ho, ho, ho. You just will naturally start to figure it out if you listen to it a few enough times. and. The same thing's gonna happen for learning to read sheet music. It's more abstract than that, I know, but basically we'll learn these notes and you'll start to listen to them and then play them. And then once you've kind of established yourself with playing and, that, and listening to them, you'll do both at the same time. You'll, you'll play and you'll read them, is what I meant to say. So this is, so late in, in another part of the course, I'm gonna, give you more direct exercises for note reading. Like for instance, this is taken from a, a lesson on just reading notes on the D string, the D major notes. And a lot of that will, will be learning what the notes are and then learning to read various little exercises without the tabs or without any hints. So, and then if you get lost, you can always refer up to this. But anyway, in this lesson, we're going to focus more on kind of the intuitive process of learning when you, when you start with things you already know pretty well. So, but before getting into that, there's some preparation you can do, which is just really be able to play some basic things. If you are an absolute beginner, you've just started to play a week ago, I recommend don't do note reading yet. Wait a little bit, wait a couple months 
And if you are if you trying to decide whether or not you should learn it, well, I hope you watch this video and see if maybe it'll make you more curious. But I don't see it as absolutely essential in the same way that developing your ear is and developing a good sound. So make sure you can play a few scales, I would say, before doing this course, like D major, G major, and A major, and be able to play like 15, 20 tunes, something like that, okay? So I'm gonna keep going though, and now dive into the, the basic process of intuitive note reading, okay? I-N-R for short, because I'm a nerd and I like to make acronyms. So the first step is to play something without reading. So something really simple like open D twice to D1. The next step is to read it. So in, in this lesson, when I am to denote that I'm reading something, I'm going to do this. Okay, and then you read and play that simple thing at the same time. All right, so here's a highly professional diagram of the process. Just play, just read, play along track if you like, and then read and play. And then we do a practice loop. So a practice loop is a simple little routine you do to practice anything that's challenging for you. I have a full post on different ways, creative ways you can do practice with practice loops. And I'll, I'll put a link to that on this page. Um, so here's that example we just did. D, open D twice to D1. And so uh, basically you would start by just playing it. Then you could try it with a play long track. We start it over. Three. So I just played a little bit. And I'm not looking at anything. I'm just getting getting it in my ear. So this is the Okay. So that's the first step of intuitive note reading, just playing. I have a little sheet music video of that piece, but I'm just gonna you can you can view it when you get to the page. It'll look better. And so now the next step is we're going we're gonna to take that same little piece, but now you'll see sheet music, a little snippet of sheet music. So we're going to use the same play along track and just read along with it. Here we go. After a while, it's going to make sense. There's two of one thing, two of another. Maybe it'll start to make sense that that's D1, that's open D, D1. You probably didn't need me to explain that, but if you kept listening long enough, it would start to make sense. Okay, so the final step then, we could start the thing over and we'll try to do, we'll try to both read and play at the same time. Okay, and now we go back to step one, just play. This is nice, this is kind of a relief. I'll just read. I'll do reading and playing at the same time. Back to just playing. And we do another round of just playing. Just reading. Now both. Okay, so there you have it. That's really the entire process of intuitive note reading. It Once you can play something, then without a lot of explanation, you just start looking at it and listening to it, and you will get it. So, a key thing is to have audio and the sheet music and have them perfectly match, okay? And so that's an, an essential part of this process. Another kind of important 
almost as important thing is to not have big long pieces but to have little snippets because then it really gives your brain time to absorb something and get that that enough repetition on a small thing you will get it and that's sort of the main idea with fiddlehead anyway is to is to get you to focus on little bits become like kind of a master at one little thing before you move on i want to point out a few other things about the process before we move on but you do have the main idea so when we do the practice loop i'm going to go back to that so and you you just play you just read then you read and play and then we start over again I think it's important that you regularly start it over because when you just return to playing, you kind of can breathe easy because it's less mental effort. You can just play for a few rounds. And then you can, you, you might notice that when you're reading and playing, your bow gets off, your sound is bad, you go out, out, out of tune. And it's because you're thinking so hard about this new thing that you lose track of your sound. And so by returning to just playing, you can kind of connect again with your sound, your body, maybe relax your shoulders and your hands. And then you go back to just reading and then doing it. So I really think that even if you think you're really doing amazing with reading and playing, you may want to just like constantly return to just playing. And with that in mind, what you you will probably most most of you will probably your sound worse when you're reading. Your playing will probably be a little worse, maybe a little, maybe a lot. And so I'm just want to give you a friendly warning, and say be kind to yourself because it will happen. It happens to everybody. I've taught people for like 25 years, and when when the, when you're really thinking hard, then. There, it, people who normally would sound good, you know, they start to sound worse. It's just going to happen. So just kind of a friendly warning there. Okay. So you have the basic idea. You can really pause the video and go practice it with anything you already know. That said, I'm just going to give you a few more examples in the rest of the video lesson. So we're going to do the same process with a slightly more complex phrase. So here we have it. So it's two bows on D, D1, D2, D3. And it, so just first step, just play it. Do it a bunch of times. Next step, do you remember what it is? Read without playing. So here we go. Let's start it over. Three. Four. So I'm just going to read. There's two of everything. Starting to see. It starts over there. Okay, now I'm going to play and read at the same time. I'm going to do it again. Make sure I got it. Now just play. Just read. Both. Again. Okay. So does this make sense so far? If it doesn't, ask me a question because I'm really developing this as Kind of as I get feedback from you, I've been developing this course and it will change. I might redo some of these lessons because as a teacher, you, you have certain blind spots. Like there's certain things I've known how to do for a long time and maybe I take for granted that something that might be clear to me is not clear to you. So all your questions and feedback really help a lot with the teaching process. So thank you, anybody who's said anything. Um, so in addition to doing that on any scale or whatever, you, in it, you can do it with two note intervals. So like A to D3. So I have all these exercises to practice intervals that are often challenging for beginners. 
And these are part of learning a tune, but you can also use these same little exercises to learn note reading. So I would just do the same process, just play A to twice, D3, and then, and then just read it. And then both. Just play. Just read. Both. Alright. And you can start to play with the process on your own. Like maybe you'll want to do each step three times. Play it three times read it three times, and then do both three times. So again, we're just, the, this last example is just sort of the holy grail of fiddling, which is the tune, getting a tune, getting to doing this on a tune. And again, break it down. We're gonna do biom cabbage down. We're gonna start with just the first quarter and just start by, if you don't know the tune already, you might wanna pause the video and learn it. It's one of the more basic tunes I teach, so I just play this little piece, the first quarter. And I start to, and oh, this looks a little different, but I'm gonna look at it. Okay, there's, see, it looks like D2 is those first four notes, and then D3 is those second two. You know, just start to talk it through a little bit. And then, okay, that's starting to make sense. And then try to do both at the same time. So read and play. Notice I didn't even use a play along track there. I mean, after a while, you can start to just, just sort of, that, that might even be a good first step once you get going. But the play along tracks are good because they verify your understanding. You can kind of hear, oh yeah, I'm doing it right. So let's do that now. So just play. One more round. Just read. Starting to make sense now both at the same time. And that's it. Okay. So we then once you do it for that, guess what comes next? We do it on the next part of the tune, the second quarter. Then we do it on the third quarter. Oh, it's the same thing. Hmm, interesting. And then you can kind of look and compare those. Yeah, they look the exact same. There's the third quarter sheet music. There's the first quarter. So noticing these repetitions will make it a lot easier for you to learn tunes when you're reading them from books and online sheet music. All right. So then the final step would be to just play the whole tune. I have these little sheet music videos for some of the tunes and, and exercises. But then you would do the same process. You would maybe play the whole tune a few times, read it a few times, and then do both. Simple as that, okay? And so I suggested a few like very basic tunes that are on Fiddlehead that you could do this with. Mary Had a Little Lamb, Twinkle Little Star, Frere Jaca. Those are all really familiar melodies to most people. And even if you hate those tunes because you had a horrible experience with a violin teacher growing up, um, I suggest starting with them because you know that melody, it will guide you. Just hearing that really well in your head will guide you in figuring out how note reading works, okay? So... Um, yeah, and I'd like to just close th this lesson by saying, remember to sound good. If you're, you're, you probably will get off, your sound will go away when you're doing this at first, and just take a break, go back to playing something nice without any sheet music, and your, and your session on a, on an upbeat note. I always think it's a good idea. End with something sounding good, okay? kind of walk away and makes you want to practice again the next day. And then also just want to emphasize again that you can do this on any instrument, 
any teacher, any other online teacher, say you, you find me annoying and you don't want to, you know, you're tired of my stupid jokes, you have a teacher you like, but you could do the same process and you could do it uh, with any instrument. You know, you, if you, the, the key thing is that the audio has to match the sheet music exactly and it helps to have little tiny snippets to work with because then it, you can more easily learn those bits. Otherwise, it becomes overwhelming. Okay, so let me know how it goes. I have a lot of other stuff for this note reading for Fiddler's course. There'll be dedicated exercises to learning, say, the notes on the D string, the notes on the A string, the notes on the E string, on the G, and a few other, like, low second finger. And just, uh, there's also, there's a bunch of fun stuff to help you help you get this. Another, another thing, if you haven't already seen, is the note name game basically getting you to learn the note names really well by kind of a call and response game. So, all right, so that's about it. Let me know if you have questions, if something could be improved about the lesson, and that's all. Hope you are well. I'm here in Los Angeles. I maybe should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video. This is my set. I'm in the Enchanted Forest in Los Angeles, and it's I'm um, hunkered down during the quarantine, just filming and working a ton. And I hope you're all doing well, and we'll see you soon. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.